live in the saloon bar where Sister Susie's producing the show with great style and panache. Uh, Always. How many marks out of ten did we get today, by the way? Um, well, it, it did start with a little bit of a dip with no music, but it's gone back up to a 10 out of 10. That was in the wow. equipment. Can't believe that was in equipment. That was in the equipment. That was unbelievable. That's what that was. What's our, what's our drink of the day? Well, I feel like it's getting a bit autumnal, isn't it? So maybe a maybe a half of a stout or a porter would half be quite stout. tasty. Okay, all right, okay. Eat a sharples. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with that? So uh, very trendy now. Very trendy. Come on, Matt, yeah. get with the groove. Very true. Today's confession comes from Mr. Chips. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chips. So in the collective, my confession harks back to the mid-90s when I was a young and naive primary school teacher working in South London. The event that I need absolution for takes place on the dreaded school residential week in which teachers reluctantly take students away to take part in various out-of-bound activities in the countryside. <laughs> Nowadays, most schools use purpose-built sites where the children generally take part in their activities in one place or in the surrounding area. Not so for us in the 90s. At our school, we coordinated everything ourselves from transport, activities through to accommodation. In the year in question, we planned to travel to the St Custard's Outdoor Education Centre and we stayed at a local youth hostel, which we rented for the whole week. The week went pretty much as planned as we, two male members and of staff and two female colleagues, travelled down in two minibuses transporting 30-odd Year 6 children, by which I mean, obviously, there was just roughly 30 rather than 30 <laughs> okay. Year 6 children yeah. odd, yeah. to take part in various climbing, hiking activities mixed in with visits to local areas of interest. The day went smoothly and like clockwork. In the evening, though, we had to entertain the children ourselves, and this tended to involve lots of football matches or asking the kids to keep their dormitories tidy. What fun that must wow. have been. Wow. The girls were staying in one single-story building and the boys in another. We weren't totally lazy, though, Father Simon, and did timetable in a few activities as entertainment for the children. For example, one night was disco night, which basically meant putting on a CD in the dining area, watching all the girls dance madly to Gina G in the middle of the room, oh, yeah. whilst the boys stood yes. uncomfortably on the edge of the stage, stuffing their faces with cheap crisps. Good. Ah, uh, school discos. Classic. Don't you love them? Mm -hmm. Evening in question, and the reason for my confession was timetabled as the night walk. Where we would take the children on a night <laughs> walk for a walk on a right. torchlight ramble through lanes and fields, so they would experience nature in the raw. Something they tended not to get in Battersea. I had gone on a similar residential the year before, supporting a more experienced teacher. And at one point, we had stopped, and by torchlight, he told awestruck children a spooky story about the ghost of a fisherman, just to make the walk a little, little bit more memorable. Well, this year, I was the senior teacher on the trip, and I was determined to emulate the success of the previous year. At an allotted point in the walk, we stopped in a large, lonely, desolate field. I started my yarn and told them that this field had once been the site of an old Victorian prison, and that locals said that ghoulish ghosts of former inmates still stalk the local area. Well, immediately, you could feel the collective gulps and intakes of breath from my wide-eyed charges. I looked up, and in the far corner of the field, there seemed to be some neon posts glowing in the moonlight. Perfect, I thought. I asked the question, what do you think that is over there? Are they ghostly figures? Now, the collective gasps turned into yelps. <laughs> Look, I think that's Lord Granville, who was beheaded in 1652. <laughs> and isn't that oh, crazy no. Sister Susan the Slayer? <laughs> <laughs> Sister Susan the Slayer. Yeah. Wow. Like I really that. should have left it there, but my over-enthusiasm took hold. As oh, we no. trotted back to our accommodation, I found a twig and proceeded to tickle the neck of a few children, leading <gasps> to shouts of, Oh, my word, what was that? <laughs> and such like for my young charges. As it was quite late, when uh, when we returned to the youth hostel, uh, we went straight to bed. Both sets of dormitories had about 20-odd separate beds, and the children were soon washing and brushing their teeth, supervised by my colleagues. Outside on the ground, I found a branch and ran it noisily down the featherboard panelling of both dormitories. What? I laughed as I heard the screams and shouts from inside. What fun, I thought. <laughs> I have to tell you, I had a really good night's sleep, and I awoke refreshed, only to be faced... <laughs> by the stony faces and tight-lipped expressions of my female colleagues. What's up? I inquired innocently. Come here, was the sharp reply, and I was grabbed by the arm and frog-marched to the girls' dormitory. When I entered the room, it had been transformed. All the girls' mattresses had been taken off the beds and laid down in a long line down the centre of the room. The girls had spent the whole night huddled together, clutching each other and sobbing and crying, Don't let them get us! Don't let them get us, please! 
As you can imagine, both my female colleagues were not amused, having had a night from hell. <laughs> Apparently, they'd tried to get my help in the night, but were unable to wake me up. No matter how hard they banged on my door, I was dead to the world. This I put down to the stress and responsibility of leading the residential. <laughs> Now, I have to tell you, I don't feel too bad about the children, as no real harm was done. In fact, a few years ago, I po saw a post on social media chat from one of the girls in question, now in her 30s, saying, Do you remember when Mr. Chips scared the Anglo-Saxon word out of us? <laughs> <laughs> laughing emoji. So no Father Simon as a now experienced deputy head teacher in my fifties. I seek forgiveness for giving my colleagues such an awful time and the silliness of my actions. As you might say yourself, it was different times and you would never get away with doing that now. I await my fate from the gathered collective. Well, Mr. Chips, it's a nice story and maybe puts us in mind of some Halloween confessions, maybe, mm. which will be coming in. Uh, but some, some poor practice, I think. Sister Susie, what do you say? Well, Mr. Chips, I just think you took it too far. There was a nice little story on the torchlight ramble and that was fine, but did you have to touch them on the back of their necks with a twig and then bash the branch on their door? <laughs> I don't think you did. I've been uh, on those school trips and been terrified by the tales. I'm not surprised the girls couldn't sleep, so I'm not going to forgive you now. I'm not sure Lord Grenville was beheaded in 1652, <laughs> no. but anyway, brother, uh, from another guy. Uh, I think you've got to admire Mr. Chips's ingenuity here in coming up with the idea of the night walk and we're going to do something more than just, you know, walking in the night and coming up with this whole sensory experience of I'm going to use the twig and then I'm going to get a big branch <laughs> and bash the side of bash the side of their dormitory with it. I love it. And they all developed solidarity, didn't they? The okay. girls all stuck together and isn't oh. that a life lesson for us all, Suze? I think it probably is. <laughs> and and also it's stuck did. in the memory, didn't it? And it was great. They all had a great time. So, you know, hashtag forgiven. <laughs> 